In this demo, I'm going to show you how to work with table views and table view cells. I'll also show you how to use alert views to add new items, how to delete items and how to reorder items. We're going to start by creating a new Xcode project using the empty application template. We'll call it shopping. The first job is to add a new storyboard. And we're going to assign the storyboard in the application settings page as the main interface. As you can see, it doesn't appear in here. So what I'm going to have to do is quit Xcode and relaunch. So as you can see now, it appears in the main interface. I'm now going to edit my storyboard. And I'm going to add a navigation controller and that will also give me a table view controller at the same time and establish the root view controller connection. I need to give my cell a views identifier, so we'll call it cell. And now I need to create a navigation. And now I need to create a UI table view controller for my view. And I must make sure that I subclass UI table view controller. I can now assign it in my storyboard. Go to the Identity Inspector. And specify Home View Controller, which is my view controller for this view. I need to make a few minor edits. In my App Delegate, I need to delete this first method. And in my home view controller, I also need to delete the first method. And now in theory, if I run the application, we should see something working. And you can see there's my table view, and I've got the root view controller as its title. Let's go back in here, change the title to Shopping. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the Home View Controller implementation file. And as you can see, the Table View data source has three methods, number of sections in table, number of rows in section, and cell for row at index path. So for this first method, I've got one section, so I'll return one. For testing purposes, I'm going to return five. And I've used the same cell identifier, so that won't need changing. Cell.textlabel.text equals, and I'll assign a temporary value.
And if I test this now, I should get five rows, each containing the word text. Each containing the word test. And as you can see, it's working. So my next job is to create a data source. So I return here, and I'm going to create a property. I'm going to have an NS mutable array and call it items. I need to synthesize this. And I've now got a property which I can use to store the items. I'm going to initialize my items NS mutable array and I'm going to add two items for testing purposes. So I need to alloc and init it. And I'm going to now add a few items. I've now added a few items to my to my list. I now need to modify my table view data source. Instead of returning five, I'm going to return the number of items in the array. And instead of the standard text, I'm going to return the string that's stored in the correct array index. And index path contains the section and the row. So index path dot row is going to give me the correct value. So we'll test this again to make sure it's working. And as you can see, I have my two items in the array. I'm now going to add a toolbar to the bottom of the screen and that will contain an add button which will allow me to add new items to my array and to my table view. So I choose the navigation controller. Simulated metrics bottom bar is going to be an opaque toolbar which gets added to each of the views in my activity, which gets added to each of my views. I can now find a bar button item I'm going to drag that into my toolbar to position it on the right hand side I add a flexible space which pushes it across and now I need to add an on click handler an IB action so I'm going to have my home view controller.h file a control drag and I want an action add item type UI bar button item connect now I can return to my implementation file and at the bottom there is my IB action so what I'm going to do now I'm going to create a new UI alert view. I'm going to init with title message, delegate, cancel button and other buttons. Title is going to be new item. Message will be add new item Delegate this self. Cancel button is going to be cancel other button titles add. Mm -hmm. 
another bracket there and I can now set these up, set this up. So I need to set to the alert style you alert view style plain text input looks good to me. I need to set the delegate and I need to show it. Click on there and as you can see the alert view pops up. I need to change the text at the bottom Add. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the properties. Style bordered identifier add. And there we've got a plus sign. So let's test it again to make sure it works. Click on the plus and it pops up. So I now need to implement the delegate method to work out which button's being clicked and to read the value out of the uh, text. So the delegate method is returns void alert view click button at index. So the first button is cancel, so it's going to be button index 1, which is the second one. If button index is equal to 1, we've clicked on the add button. UI text field is equal to alert view text field at index 0, which is the only one text field. And I'm going to add this to my array. So self.items add object message. And I need to then refresh the table view to display it in the table view. Right, OK. Um, message.text Try that again. If I test it now, I click on the plus, click on add, and we've added a new item to the list. The next step, I'm going to show you how to add check marks and remove check marks from the different items. So I need to create a new method called table view did select row at index path. Table view did select our index path, and I'm going to retrieve the cell itself. UI table view cell equals table view cell for row at index path, and pass it the index path. So I've now got a pointer to the cell that I've selected. And I can now do an if statement to see what is the current accessory, which is the little, little uh, uh, graphic at the end. If type is equal to UI table view accessory check mark. So if there's a check mark already, I'm going to clear the uh, check mark cell dot accessory type is equal to UI table view accessory none else I need to reverse the process cell dot accessory type equals UI table view accessory Check mark. 
And what I want to do is when I've clicked on the row, I want to, whatever I do, I want to fade away the selection. So I say table view, deselect row at index path, index path, and I want to animate the deselection so it fades away nicely. So if we test this, and I tap on the cell, it greys and then goes back to white. If I tap on it again, you can see I can add and remove check marks. So my next task is to delete rows. So the methods are already there. If you look carefully, you'll see there is a method table view can edit row at index path. And I want to make sure this returns yes, which means every row is editable. So I can delete all this stuff. And that returns yes. And my next one is commit editing style, which I think is below. Table view commit editing style for row at index path. So again, I can delete some of these comments. Now, if I want to delete, this is the bit of code I need to change. So delete the row from the data source. So first of all, I need to make sure I delete the row from the data source and the row from the table cell. And I need to delete the data source record and delete the row from the table view. So I need to start editing. So self.tableView begin updates. And this is going to be a transaction, so it'll either be all or nothing. And when I finished, I want to self.tableView end updates. So then whatever's between these two will take place at the same time. So it's already deleting the um, correct row in the table view. So I need to delete the row inside the um, array list. I need to delete the row inside the NS mutable array. So self.items remove object at index index path dot row. So now that should remove the item. So let's test it again. So if I swipe across and delete, you can see it deletes the row and the other row moves back up. So my final job is to reorder the rows. And what we're going to do, we're going to set the editing property to yes, which gives little minus signs on the left-hand side and the option to delete the rows. And also on the right-hand side, if we, go, if we set the editing property to yes, to true, it adds little red circles to delete multiple rows down the left-hand side, and it also adds the reordering indicator to the right-hand side. So let's see how this is done. So the first thing I need to do, I need to add a button which is going to handle this. So I'm going to add a bar button item to the top, to the navigation item. Um, UI bar button item, I'm going to add that up here. Because I'm going to change the title of it, I need to set the identified custom, which is already set. And I'm going to change the text to edit. So I need to add an IB action to that particular button, as usual. So I control drag, create an IB action, and it's going to be edit table. And I connect. So let's go back into my implementation file and let's add some code. And there it is, IB action edit table. So what I need to do is I need to 
first of all, set the editing if the button's been pressed the first time, and if it hasn't been pressed, which pressed the second time, I need to switch the editing property off, set it to false. So again, I need an if statement. So self dot editing, which is the property, equals no. We know we need to switch the editing on. So we'll set sender dot title, which is the button, equals we need to say done now if the well, the editing is taking place. And we need to say self dot editing equals yes. And then we need to reverse the process. So we need to set sender dot title to edit again when it's switched off. And we need to say self dot editing equals no. And let's see if that now works. Click on edit and I get the delete signs but it hasn't got the reordering capability just yet so the delete should work fine and it does. When I click on done it switches the editing mode off and the item's gone. So there's another couple of methods we need to look at. The first one is table view move row at index path and the other one is table view can move row at index path. So let's start with this second one. We need to return yes, which means the row is editable. And the second one is we need to modify this to rearrange the items inside the inside the NS mutable array. So what we need to do, we need to capture the current index path that's been selected. We need to keep a copy, delete it, and insert this value in a different place. And we have a from index path and a to index path. So we'll grab an NS string, and that's equal to self dot items. And it's the from index path dot row so that captures the one we move, want to move. Then we need to delete it. Self dot items remove object at index, and this is going to be the from index path dot row. That's the one we want to move from. And then we need to insert an object at the correct index path. So self dot items insert object and the object is going to be message at index and this is going to be the to index path dot row and that should position the item in the correct place what we're also going to do I'm going to log it before and log it afterwards so we'll log the uh, self dot items before we move things and I'm going to do a log after I've moved them so we can show that the NS mutable array has changed. So let's run this. So I click on edit, I pull the butter above the milk and look at the log and you'll see milk butter before we moved and now butter milk. And then when we click on done, the items stay in the same places. So that's the end of this short demonstration. And it's shown you how you can work with UI table views, UI table view cells, and also be able to delete, add, and reorder the cells using the standard iOS mechanisms. If you want to take things further, there is a second video which demonstrates how we work with multiple pieces of data in a single cell using NS dictionaries and NS mutable arrays.